The OM1 has been on sale for just over a year now and I was lucky enough to get this camera early on so I've been using it pretty much for the last 12 months. In this video I'll be doing a deep dive review to give my long term impressions on this flagship Micro Four Thirds camera to answer a pretty big question. In today's world of high megapixel, full frame monsters, can a compact Micro Four Thirds camera really cut it? We'll be taking a look at real world test images and also watching some example video footage that I've been shooting with the OM-1. Let's start at the start though. What exactly is this camera and who is it for? Well, the OM-1 is the flagship model from OM System, formerly called Olympus. It follows on from the OM-D range of cameras like the EM-1 Mark III, but at the same time signifies a new chapter in the MFT story, and this is due to the level of technology inside the camera. You see, for the first time, OM System used a stacked, backside illuminated sensor in the camera, and this brings a huge range of benefits to the table that were previously unavailable, and we'll come on to these later in the video. I'll place a summary of the specifications on the screen now, and as always with Micro Four Thirds, the one spec that jumps out is the resolution of 20 megapixels, which is the same as the older EM1 Mark III, but this doesn't tell the whole story of potential resolution from this camera and how it can be used in the field. The other specification that may jump out to you is the weight of 599 grams. Wow. In fact, portability is one of the key selling points as there's actually plenty of photographers who are just now tired of humping around heavy gear and they're very keen to switch up to something much, much lighter. So, as we've said, lightweight dimensions is one of the key advantages a Micro Four Thirds sensor delivers. But there is another key advantage too, and this is focal length. That MFT sensor delivers a two times crop factor, so a 50mm lens delivers the equivalent focal length of 100mm. Where this crop factor really comes into play is when we get to longer focal lengths. For example, one of the best lenses to use with the OM-1 is the 100-400mm f5-6.3 to lens, which of course is actually a 200-800mm to lens. Add the OM System 1.4 extender and this focal length switches up to 1120mm. The focal length is a true game changer and gets you up close to wildlife that you wouldn't normally be able to shoot without spooking them. Birds and deer are two really great examples of this and subjects that I've enjoyed shooting with the OM-1 over the last year. Who is this camera for? Well, I'd say both serious enthusiasts and professionals alike, and this is because of the robust build quality of the OM-1. There really aren't many cameras that can match the levels of weather sealing that the OM-1 offers. In fact, it's rated to IP53, which means it can cope with harsh and wet environments, something pro photographers need if they're going to be out in the field. I took the OM-1 to Iceland in the winter and it was minus 15 conditions, it was snowing, I had absolutely no problems. Another nod to the pro credentials is the dual SD card slots, enabling users to make an instant backup of their images, or they can choose to record stills to one card and video files to the other. One clever quirk I discovered is that when you hit the review button, the OM-1 will display the most recent stills or video file depending on whether the mode dial is set to a movie mode or to stills mode. Um, so for example, if the camera is set to aperture priority mode, only stills images will appear when I press the review button, and vice versa for movie files when the mode dial is set to video mode. Now, remember that stacked sensor I mentioned earlier? So, this quad-pixel AF stacked CMOS sensor is actually quite a star feature and unlocks some serious specs, namely a boost in image quality and a serious increase in speed. For example, the older EM1 Mark III was a fast camera. It could capture 60 frames per second with the focus locked or 15 frames per second with the focus active. The OM-1 moves things on quite dramatically though and delivers blackout free shooting at up to 50 frames per second with autofocus active or 120 frames per second with AF locked. So the OM-1 shoots stills faster than some cameras can shoot movies and that's really impressive. The stacked sensor also enables a top ISO range of 102 400 but you never really want to use this and we'll come on to the ISO quality in just a moment because I want to point out a few more things about the sensor. Namely, 
that it works in conjunction with the five axis IBIS, that's in body image stabilization system, that is really, really good and offers up to seven stops of compensation or eight stops if you're using the right lens. That sensor is also put to use with the OM1's high res mode, which was on previous Olympus cameras but seems to have been refined for the OM1. You've got two options a handheld mode that shoots multiple files, moving that stacked sensor and merges them to create a 50 megapixel image. The second option is a tripod mode, where obviously the camera needs to be static, but this increases the resolution to 80 megapixels. The difference between a normal frame and this high res frame is quite startling. Here's the quality of a standard shot, which is pretty decent, but here's the high res mode. Let's see that again. Here's another standard image. And here's that same scene in high res mode. Now, I prefer to shoot in the handheld high res mode as this gives a boost in resolution without slowing me down with the need of a tripod. The technology works well and has only ever really been flummoxed a couple of times when I've been at the coast shooting fast moving waves. Another massive change is the autofocus system and its performance that I think is single-handedly worth the upgrade from the EM1 Mark III. Because while the older camera offered 121 AF points, the OM1 ramps this up to 1053. But that's not the best thing about the EF because for the first time in an OM system slash Olympus body, there's subject detection. So you can pick from birds, animals, planes, trains, and automobiles. Wait, that's, that's a film, isn't it? Anyway, this subject detection makes a massive difference to your hit rate. It locks onto subjects, and although it might seem a little gimmicky, it really does work. I'm a keen bird photographer, and here are some images all taken by making use of the subject detection feature. Then we have the face detection and eye detection AF feature, which are equally cool. This works well in stills and video. And talking of video, I think it's an area where the OM1 doesn't get enough credit. A lot of brands have brought out mirrorless cameras that shoot excellent video footage. And I think the OM1 needs to be considered in this category. Its small size makes it the perfect run and gun camera to pack when you're creating movies on the move. And it can shoot 4K footage at 60p. Plus it has ports for headphones and an external mic. And there's even a red tally light that surrounds the frame when recording, which vloggers will absolutely love. I especially like two things about the OM1 for video. The first is that even when paired with a fast 2.8 lens like the 12 to 40 Pro Optic, it's still such a lightweight combo that it doesn't put extra pressure on the motors of your gimbal. So the gimbal battery lasts a lot longer when you're out filming. Something else I love is the slow motion mode. In fact, I find myself <laughs> a little obsessed with it. You can shoot up to 240 frames per second, although this is limited to full HD. Personally, I shoot a lot of car related films and when we're shooting on boards with the presenter driving the car around, we typically use GoPro style action cameras and this is what it looks like. It does an okay job, that's fine, but just look at how the production value changes when we switch to the OM1, which is light enough to be suction clamped to the car window and doesn't jump about too much. And better still, that face detection is very sticky. It does a great job of locking on and staying locked on. Now, if you've made it this far in the video, you're probably thinking, this guy really likes the OM1, and the truth is, I really do. I didn't think I'd like this camera as much as I do, and I think it comes down to the usability of the OM1 and how its lightweight dimensions set you free to be a bit more creative. The menu system is vastly different to all other Olympus cameras, and actually different to the OM5, which was released after the OM1. 
it's a far better layout and just that much more logical and it makes more sense accessing the computational features such as that high res mode or the live ND filter or the focus stacking mode. It's just really easy. Image quality is impressive too. The raw files pack in a lot of tonal data and these can be played about with quite a bit in Lightroom. I've captured some usable images at ISO 12800. Sure, in low light conditions, a full frame sensor will be more favorable, but the OM-1 is a camera that shines in bright, well-lit outdoor conditions. That said, it's no fool in low light conditions either. Check out these landscape images captured in the dying light of the day. Are there things I'd like OM system to improve on? Definitely. Number one, how cool would it be if OM System brought out a firmware update that lets users shoot that slow motion video footage at a higher resolution? I mean, don't even worry about 4K, just give us 2.7K, please. I'd also say it's really important to use the right lenses to get the most from the system. What's more, be aware that the lenses are, are smaller. That, I mean, you ha they have smaller filter threads, so you're looking at a range from 62 millimeters to 72 millimeters, and this could be a bit of an issue when sourcing screw-in ND filters, but my solution was to buy a simple and budget-friendly step-up ring to make things fit. Personally, I'd stick to the pro range of OM System slash Olympus Optics. As I've already said, the 12 to 40 f2.8 is a great workhorse lens, and the 40-150 f4 Pro weighs in at just 382 grams, which is lighter than most smartphones. But that amazing 100 to 400 millimeter lens unlocks the door to getting you really, really close to wildlife subjects. Which brings me to my verdict. If you shoot in the studio, billboard portraiture, yeah, go out and get a full frame camera. But if you shoot outdoors, you may well be surprised at how the OM-1 fits into your workflow. Modern, big megapixel cameras are great, but all that data can slow down your processing workflow. And there's something about the OM-1 that really sets you free from all that. A pure, go anywhere camera that could pretty much do anything. Plus, this is one of the most affordable systems going, so if budget is an issue, you will find a friend in the OM-1. I'm going to leave you with some more video footage that I shot with the OM-1 because I, I really like it. Enjoy it, and I'll see you next time.